Hi, my name is Reverend Carol Kiyama, and this is Thoughts of a Shaken Pastor Season 5. In this season, we're talking to men and women who have positively influenced the growth of Christianity in this country. And today, it is my extreme pleasure to introduce someone who's very, very dear to me, a loving sister in the Lord, a big sister. Welcome, Sister Ada Adoyo. Thank you. So thank nice you, to Cara, have you thank here. Thank you. I'm glad. Thank I'm glad you. to be thank here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Please tell us a little bit about yourself, growing up and all that. Uh, my mother has 13 children. Wow. Okay. In all, it's like we are 18 because mm. she she married a widower. My dad mm. had mm. lost his first wife. Mm. And then she came in and out of herself, she has 13 and I'm child number seven and her first daughter. Wow. So it means I have six siblings who are brothers. And five others before that. And and uh, five, and five steps. others before wow. that. Correct, correct. Mm. And then now when I came, uh, six others followed. So I have six brothers ahead of me and um, and six others. Let me say others because there are two sisters and two brothers. Oh, wow. So I'm, I'm the middle child of my mm. mother. Mm. Yeah, so I find that, I think about it and I find it a, like a, an honor, maybe a hidden honor of the Lord. Mm. So I'm her child number seven both ways. If you come from the bottom, <laughs> I'm number seven. From, from the, the top, top, you're still number, number seven. seven. So I'm like the middle child and mm. so the medium the mm. the mediator mm. the mediator mm. of uh, the family so okay. I, I i just like that position yeah. oh wow yeah. oh wow yeah. and how did you were your christian were your parents christians yes where well, i come from the quaker uh, ah. uh, type of uh, christian faith mm. uh, who are also called friends mm. friends as marafiki mm. and um uh the, the big thing about mm. uh, friends is that there's a lot of scripture memorization. Mm. They don't talk about salvation. I don't know now because mm. I moved on. But uh, that time it was just like memorize the scripture and then you are told don't, don't steal, don't uh, do bad things, mm. just like that. But salvation was never. In fact, I normally say like uh, that at the age of nine, mm. r roughly nine, I could have mm. been eight, nine, ten. Uh, there was a teacher that was telling, um, you know, teaching us in Sunday school mm. under a tree because we didn't have a room for, but we were under a tree and uh, she, and it was Christmas time, Christmas mm. season, not mm. Christmas day, Christmas season. And she talked about Mary, the Virgin Mary. Mm. And she, she said, as girls and boys, I would like you to grow up and be like Mary the mother of Jesus. And in my heart, I felt I must do that. I mm. want to do that. And so mm. I had that little commitment. Mm. But mm. I think at that time, she had, mm. if she had said, anyone who wants to get Give born again, Jesus. I would have been born again that mm. time. Mm. But because she just left us to resolve, to mm. make a resolution, I made a resolution and by God's grace, he honored in keeping me safe in the in that uh, girlhood stage mm -hmm. so i would say as a, a quaker i my scripture memorization begins there mm. yeah and that's but what laid the foundation for everything you've done a, later a big foundation mm. for me that uh, has affected my later life so how so, did you come into personal faith then i got into uh, when i finished my primary school mm. i applied schools you know you apply that school that school that mm, school mm. i think there were like four that mm. you are to apply and out of them one of them you, you will be called mm -hmm. so i don't even know how my teacher wrote limuru girls school because i was a village girl village in western kenya in some uh, corner over there so I, I i i don't know how my teacher my headmaster wrote limuru girls i had no idea so lo and behold, the results come and people are taken to Butere girls, to Lugulu girls. Those were the schools for mm. Westerners. Mm. Don't tell me about uh, Kenya High School or <laughs> some other school. No. Just Butere no. girls, Tosha. Butere girls. Oh, no, there were four. Mm. Butere girls, Mukumu girls, Lugulu girls, and Kaimosi girls. Mm. Yeah, and Kaimosi was even the best because it was friends. Butere was SK. Mm. So... Uh, Anyway, those were the schools. Anyone who passed exams should go to, to Kano. Yes, mm. that was the... But now me, the letter came from Limuru girls, far away 
from western mm. so problem number one distance because mm. you are not flying there you are not just walking <laughs> there transport that means mm. point number two it was high cost mm. high cost and mm. i've told you we are a family of 18 mm. children so now this man with his retired uh, something was an agricultural officer my father mm. so now he was running a, sh a shop over there and um, oh, wow. and you're a girl that is not also not working for you. It's not working. The separate factors were against me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyway, he struggled and he got fees and I left for school. And uh, I was in that school six whole years, Carol. Wow. Six whole years. And um, my mother, my father never knew where Limuru girls was. Theirs was to look for money. They put you on the train. And that's it. They will mm. see you back on the train. And even that train was not outside our doorstep. You have to take a bus and find your, uh, yourself home. And mm. you better be there on the day that school closed, not mm. two, three days later. So uh, when I was in, and I, because of that, I decided I was going to work hard. Mm. I decided I was not, because it was high, high cost school, Limur girls. Mm. But it was also, oh, can I say, therefore, it was a school for the rich, mm. maybe I can say. Mm. Like, um, I, I don't want to name names, but they were but the, the, the who and who of, of Kenya were mm. there. Mm. And so for me, I was like a fish out of water, misplaced. Mm. Is this where I really belong? Mm. But I was there. I was. Mm. I mean, I was there. And I you had the quit. grades for it anyway, so. I had the grades. I wasn't pushed there. Mm. So when I got to Form 3, I was mm. pushing to be an engineer. Mm. I was pushing physics. I was pushing maths. I wanted to to, to achieve and, and show my dad that it was high cost, but it was worth it, you know. So uh, and then in third term, the time for the show, show mm. you know show? Yes, the agriculture show, show of Kenya. Yeah. It was a big deal. A big deal indeed. And so the school would organize for some students to go for to the uh, mm. show, the Nairobi show. And so I was one of those that went and in the show on this particular year in Form 3 in uh, end of September, October of that year, I um, I, I, in the showground, they, of course, they, they are giving you that leaflet and that leaflet. And one of the desks that I went to while just, you know, it was roaming around, mm -hmm. really, there isn't much you're doing. Uh, I went to this desk and it was Scripture Union desk. Oh, wow. Scripture Union desk. In an agricultural show. Show, yeah. Thank God for that. And I would like to encourage Scripture Union, KSCF, wherever you are, please just reach out to some high schooler. Mm. Something mm. will happen. Mm. So I was given, I, the, he was giving out pamphlets, the mm. person at the desk mm. of the mm. Scripture Union. And um, I, I uh, did I say Scripture Union? Yes, you said Scripture Union. Yeah, scripture Union. And uh, so I, um, I said, let me just, uh, like, I'm just sorry for this guy in the heat of the, in the heat, in the dust of the show. Let me just take for the sake of pleasing this guy. So he looks like he's doing something. Mm. So I, I took the, uh, that, a leaflet mm. and I went with it. It was a Saturday. So Sunday morning, I said, let me look at this little book that I got. Reading that book, it told me with all that you are aspiring to do. And now in my case, engineer physics, all mm. those things, you are lost. Mm. And I said, lost? An engineer lost? Surely I can map out and know how to find myself. I said, you are lost without Jesus Christ. Mm. And the verse that stood out for me and still speaks to me today, it was uh, John 14 and verse 6. Mm. Jesus Christ is the way, the, the truth, truth and, and the life. life. So either if you don't want to get lost, Jesus is the way. If you want the truth and not to be lied to, he's the truth. If you want life, not the teenage of being an engineer and be a big woman, but just the life, abundant life, it's Jesus Christ. Those three things changed me. I got out of bed, it was Sunday morning. Got out of bed, I knelt by my bedside and I said, Lord, I don't understand you. Mm. I don't know what the, all this being lost is, but what I don't want is to be lost. Mm. So if you can help me not to be lost, please help me. Mm. So I prayed a prayer like that and that was it. Not, no earthquake, no thunder, no what, but I knew something happened in my life. Mm. At that point, I was actually the secretary of the Christian Union, writing letters to invite speakers to come and I was not born again. <laughs> I was not born again. You know, so I tell whoever is viewing me, 
you can be so busy in the church being mm. the worship leader being the one helping people park cars as they go into the house of the lord and you are not born again yeah. please get born again yes because the, i remember when i was a teenager someone came to speak in our church i used to go at international christian center mm. and they said you just hanging around an airport does not make you an airplane and that no. stuck with me yeah. and i thought you know and he said coming to church doesn't make you a christian no. there has to be that personal relationship with jesus christ Correct. Correct. so you gave your life to christ so and i know for a fact that i well maybe not for a fact yes. i want to know is what yes. let me rephrase that mm. did you eventually become this engineer or how did your journey metamorphosize okay so i i did my o levels and i passed well mm -hmm. and then came back to the same school for my a levels mm -hmm. and uh, the group grades that I got could not allow me to, uh, I didn't end up doing sciences. I actually began with maths, physics, like the first uh, two, three weeks mm. of the of the form five. Mm. And I realized it was too hard. It was, I, I was struggling. It wasn't coming naturally. Mm. So I changed and I did now economics. I did uh, geography and I did English. Mm -hmm. So in the end, I ended up being a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for that because it has taught me something else. Even mm. in what I am now, I think it's credit to the teaching career mm. uh, that I've done for so long. Ability to communicate, ability to help that one who's struggling as opposed to an engineer where you are seeing pipes are connected or mm. something else. It's yeah. amazing how God works, isn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. I think you're, you're a naturally a gifted as a teacher. Yes. Just yes. teaching, I think, comes naturally for you and guidance, yes. helping people. So. And then going to this school where you have to meet all these people that would eventually mm. help you, ease you into the calling of God upon your life. Completely. So you go Completely. to campus. Yeah. So I went to Nairobi University. But even just to pick up the point you've said, uh, uh, if I had gone to Butere mm -hmm. or Kaimosi. those, yeah, Kaimosi, uh, I would have, um, I see my view point mm. would have been a bit Very narrower, narrow. yeah. a bit narrower. But now this, in that school, they were the British. It, mm. it was just after independence, like mm. uh, the British, a lot of them were still around. Mm. There were still white people. We had Asians, we had um, tribally, we had people from coast, we had people from Nyanza, we had people from central, we had everybody there. In fact, we had people from Uganda, mm. we had people from that would send their children uh, to, to high school. Imagine mm. high school, they would come by train from mm. uh, Kampala and come wow. and land in, mm -hmm. yes. And so for me, in that very 14 years old start, until I was 18, 19 there mm. in uh, high school, it really sunk me, took my roots mm. into a wider plane yeah. of association and connection. And you were going to eventually lead a big church that is very cosmopolitan. It's very amazing. So God was preparing. It's preparing. Yeah. Even though your it's, heart was breaking, you didn't go to Kamosi. Yeah, oh, yeah. All yeah. things worked together Work, for good. They did. They did. So you got to campus. Yes. Uh -huh. So I, I went to Nairobi University. Mm -hmm. Uh, at that time, uh, uh, the Kenyatta University had just begun to mm. offer a degree. Before then, it was like S1, I, mm. uh, you know, the step below that. Mm. And uh, I went to... Kenyatta College, just uh, to Kenyatta College. College, yeah. Now mm. it was uh, Kenyatta University. But even then, it was like if you're in the university, there is but one university. Yeah, the Nairobi. Nairobi university. The Nairobi University. <laughs> so I was happy to go there. And for three years, I was there studying education and those two subjects, economics and geography. And um, uh, before I went to the university, I did, uh, I did uh, what is it called, some teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was untrained, yes, but I could teach in high school, mm -hmm. you know, from one, from two. Mm -hmm. And while I was at a school called Ingotse High School, mm -hmm. Uh, there was a gentleman who graduated from Nairobi University mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, graduated and came and taught with me before now I went to the university and left mm -hmm. him there. He was a mature entry person. Mm -hmm. So he looked at me and said, you know that Nairobi University, mm -hmm. when you go there, you must come out with two things. I said, huh? he was by no means a Christian. No, no, just mm -hmm. a man. Mm -hmm. just, uh, and he was married and so mm -hmm. on. But he just looked at me and said, that institution you are going to, you must come out with two things. Come out with a degree, come out with a husband. I looked at him, I said, husband, degree, yes, <laughs> husband, I don't know. Then he said, no, no, P 
people who don't come out with a husband, they mark time for the longest and they do blunders. So you go there with these two targets. It's like I threw it in the dustbin. I said, mm, advice my ears have heard, mm -hmm. but I don't think um, that's going to be pressure on me. But lo and behold, I was in that university and in the just before I began my third year, uh, Bishop Adoyo, who had been the chairman of the Christian Union the previous year, at the Nairobi University. At that Nairobi University and now had graduated because he was a year ahead of me. Mm. Now I'm going in third year, but him, he has left the university now. He came back, he said, and I was serving at a, at a, at a wedding of mm. one of the university people, mm. just a young person. In fact, he was Ugandan. He was getting married to a Ugandan girl. But the, the wedding was in Nairobi, mm. at the university actually. So it was like the CU are uh, mm. the ones to shugulikia you, mm. you know. Mm. So uh, I, I, I was busy serving. And uh, Boniface Adoyo was there as a guest, mm. as one who was the chairman of mm. this young man who is getting married. Mm. And he has come to witness. So we are busy. Let me say this, and let me say to whoever else wants to hear, that please, wherever you are, be busy serving. Mm. For me, my husband saw me when I was serving, I was mm. carrying the two, uh, biscuits, because you know you don't go into pilau, <laughs> no. Biscuits and soda <laughs> is, <laughs> was, the, was, the reception, was the reception, and the wedding stood. It didn't fail because there was no... There was no pilau? No, 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 it stood, <laughs> the test of time. Mm -hmm. And so I... I I, just as I was, I was wearing a red suit, mm. a red little suit, and I was carrying the trays and uh, helping this, this. Then he said, look, he said, that's the girl. Oh, he wow. had been seeing me. I mean, I had been in the CU. He had seen me when he was in second year and third year. And now uh, those two years. He had, but this is a time when he realized, maybe he saw, oh, this mm. one is serious. At least she's serving. Mm. She's not just a Sitting member. Behind. Yeah, you know. So that's how, when he approached me, he asked me, I did uh, uh, the gimmicks of Christian girls. I mm. said, I, I need to pray. Mm -hmm. He said, have you finished praying? I said, no, I'm still praying. I want mm -hmm. the Lord to speak. After some time, I said yes, and the rest is history. It's history. Yes. Wow, so you did come out of there with a degree and a husband. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Okay. I, that that uh, advice took, took effect. Amen. Yes. And so now you, you finished, you've met a Bonfas. You graduate. How long was it before you got married? Mm, like, um, like um, I, I, eight months, maybe eight, eight, nine months. Because I finished like in July and I got married in April. Okay, following year. year. Yeah, yeah. So he was already in ministry or how, what is it? Talk no, to no. us about the journey of ministry. For him, no, we were, we were, we were pursuing. What we wanted was to be Christians and be a witness, but in not to be in ministry. Who in the marketplace. In the marketplace. Marketplace. So you get posted to a school? So I got posted. Now, I uh, at that time, and I think they still do that even now, they take you to your home province, in, mm. in my case, in the, at that time, province mm. or county in this mm. case. So you are uh, posted, try and be posted to the county. So I was posted in Western Kenya, Bungoma, mm. uh, far, very close to Uganda. Mm. And he's in Nairobi. So I, I said, now... How does this go? I wanted mm -hmm. a transfer to get to Nairobi, but you can't get to Nairobi because you have a boyfriend in Nairobi, no? Mm -hmm. If it's a wife, it could change. Anyway, so when we got married, I had to get a transfer from Bungoma and came to Nairobi. And um, uh, even in Nairobi, I couldn't get a school because everybody wants to come to Nairobi. So there was a lady uh, in, the, in the teacher service commission who told me, you have two options. You either go back to Bungoma as we look for a school in Nairobi, or I post you to Thika Technical, mm. Thika Technical, and you you come from Nairobi going there every day, whichever way you make, but you'll be knocking at my door again and again for me to remember you. Of course, I said, no, I will live in Nairobi and be posted to Thika. Mm -hmm. So I told my first, after uh, Bungoma, I went to, to Thika, Thika Technical. Thika Technical. Mm -hmm. That's why I taught for, I think it was two terms, mm -hmm. just two terms. Then I um, went to Highway Secondary School. Mm -hmm. Now she got me a place to go to uh, Highway Secondary School. From Highway Secondary School, I needed to, I was living in Buruburu. Mm -hmm. 
and there was another lady who was living next to highway secondary school and we were teaching same subjects. So off to teacher service commission and we said, can we switch? Yeah. I, I, Ida Adoyo, go teach at Moy Forces Academy, which yeah. is next to Buruburu, mm -hmm. and you, Becky Nganga, uh, uh, John Nganga's wife, mm -hmm. Rebecca, you oh, come Rebecca. and teach. Yes, you come oh, and wow. teach at highway because you live in uh, Plains uh, something there. Plainsville. Yes, Plainsville uh, there. Uh, so we switched. And so wow. I was at Moi Forces for um, some time, maybe two, three years. And then uh, uh, at that time, my husband uh, dropped a bomb on me. He said, I'm going to ministry. Where was he working? What did he, what was, was working for Rank Xerox. He was in sales and marketing. Oh, uh -huh. Yeah, he was in sales. At the university, he did design. Mm. But now I think he found himself uh, gravitating towards something that we, uh, to do with marketing out there in the market, not confined in an office. So he was working for <laughs> evangelism. Rank. He was preparing for evangelism. Evangelism, yeah. yeah. He was. Uh -huh. uh, he worked for a company called Rank Zero. I remember Rank Zero. He also worked for another one called uh, Business Machines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he was into sales mm -hmm. in that, and so uh, he comes home and drops this bomb. Yes, and then he says, "I'm going to ministry." I said, "What do you mean?" how does that work? <laughs> so he says, uh, yeah, and uh, so I say, where? The first thing is where? So he says, in my head, it's like, let it be fuller theological, let mm. it be Wheaton uh, <laughs> theological, let, but at worst, or let, a Robert. <laughs> or a Robert, at worst, let it be St. Paul's, mm. here at mm. Limuru. No. He says, this college is yet to start. I said, yet to start. And so, yeah, we are the pioneer students. You and who? You and me, my wife. I said, no, please. You can't put me in what I don't even know. <laughs> now, okay. let me ask you, let me take you a bit back. By this time, you were fellowshipping at, at Nairobi Pentecostal Church? You know, even when we were at the university, this mm. is how it used to work mm. for all the Christian Union people. Mm -hmm. we, would, we would conduct a nine o'clock uh, Sunday service, mm -hmm. nine o'clock to ten, ten thirty, and then people disperse and go to, to their, their churches. other churches, mm. like those who would go to Jokayo, the Deliverance mm. Church. It used to be at Karyoko, Isli, mm. wherever, mm. and some will go to an NPC. Mm -hmm. and so for me, I opted for NPC because you are walking; closer. it's yeah. closer. Mm -hmm. Just walk up the road, do the work, mm -hmm. and then go back to the halls of residence. So already there was that gravitating mm. towards. But when my husband finished, you know. University, he actually got very active in that very church. Mm. Yeah, so that was a church uh, arrangement at that time. So here you find your loving husband has organized for both of you to go to Bible school. That is yet to begin. Yeah, that is yet to. <laughs> I said, let's, I told him, let's go and look at it. Let, just tell me. He said, it's somewhere in current. I said, okay, Karen is inviting enough. But mm. now <laughs> we are the first. The question here is, we are the pioneers. Or you are the pioneer. So we went there, and I'm telling you, Pastor Carol, it was a it was buildings, little buildings of chicken runs. R Let me not call them rooms, compartments where chickens used to be here. Maybe those that are two weeks, those that are one month, those are chicken runs, <laughs> and with meshed wires by way of windows, mm -hmm. meshed wires by way of windows. I said, my friend, no, this is reverse gear. This is reverse. I mean, we are going backwards. We finish university to go. And we forward. finish at the Nairobi University at I'm the time. I'm telling you, that's the thing. And you're not that's going the to America and Galo Kusoma theology. Yes, now we are going to some dingy place that is made of chickens and chicks. <laughs> oh no. Then, um, oh, but you know, dear. I could see the resolve. I mm. could see the resolve of, and I thought, since he's not forcing me to go into theology, I told him, let everybody ashike barabara yake. Yangu ni kufundisha. Me, I'm a high school teacher trained so. But you, in you, with your marketing design, you seem to be abandoning going this way. It's okay. But you know, he explained to me, his parents mm. were clergy in the Anglican church. Mm. And then his dad died suddenly. Like, like he had a heart attack or he died suddenly. Let me just mm. say that. Mm. And I think that jolted my husband into saying, I can't allow this fire to die. Mm. The fire of ministry, the mm. fire of my father, mm. the fire that my father brought me on. Mm. I can't let it die. Mm. 
Mm. And so he, he um, I think that made him to make a quick decision mm. into being. So I was battling with, I don't want him to be, but I don't want to frustrate him. This is of God. Mm. It's not a sin. It's not backsliding. Mm. You know, so that, um, uh, um, so I, 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 in a way, I supported him. I said, mm. it's okay. You, you go in and let me do the teaching. So I remained as a teacher at Moy Forces Academy, and he was here. So he would be in uh, um, AIU mm. next. It was called Next Nairobi Evangelical Graduate School of, of Theology. Theology. Yes, now it's AIU. No, it's he, a university, finally. No, it's a university. <laughs> so even that time it was a university, oh, but uh, not, no, not the way it looks now. Nobody knew it, mm. Pastor Carol. Nobody knew it, and they were the, fa the first students were four. Four student, Bonfess Ado is student number one. If you go in that university, it still is so. <laughs> so it was a matter of, why can't we go at a proven place, mm -hmm. more than a place where we are excavating to find out its potential. Mm -hmm. But um, that, that, that's history now. And uh, I taught at Moy Forces. I realized it was a strain in that I was this way with the children, two little girls, small, mm -hmm. and then the father is this way until Friday, and Friday he comes to see, to visit us at Moy Forces Academy because I lived in the school. Mm -hmm. So he comes to see us, but he's coming with volumes of books. He's coming to do assignments. I'm saying, this is not working. Mm. You, can't, you can't miss to see us for a week and you're coming with the books. Then mm -hmm. remain there, you know? So... I, I decided um, maybe I leave teaching for a bit. Mm. So I left teaching for a bit, maybe those two, three years that he was in, in, the, in the training. And um, I joined Christian Learning Material Center, mm. a Sunday school development curriculum mm. Mm. Uh, organization. It's still there, mm. still there mm. in the same place of uh, next mm. of AIU. And so I, I, I wrote materials for Sunday school. Oh, so at least you still were working? Yes, I, was, wow. I, had, to, I had to be still working because uh, he wasn't sponsored. It mm. was just here and there, this one sympathizing, that one uh, giving. I think we didn't understand ministry at that time, the mm. population mm. of uh, Kenya at that time. So it was uh, difficult. I had to work. It must have been quite hard for you, mm. coming from having a prestigious job with housing, mm. and then now here you are stuck yeah. in this little college. Yeah. You have to take this and job that is not as prestigious. As prestigious. Probably and then, not earning the same. Yeah. And then the, even the, the accommodation, mm. the, the places, of, places of residence, they weren't nice. They weren't nice. They were just makeshift. Mm. Like let's, now that we have uh, uh, four students and uh, three of them are married and uh, there's a bachelor, let's make quarters for them, uh, makeshift. So it wasn't uh, it was the difficult. best. It was really like a retrogression, but uh, uh, for that sh period of time, that was a way out. Yeah. What made you stay and believe and support? Because this is important. I mean, in this day and age when people give up so quickly, like this your thing, you go do your two years, mm. you'll find us here. What made you decide, you know what, I need to support this? I guess I realized, number one, that I want my children to appreciate their father in every season mm. of their lives. Mm. They are small. They, I don't want their, their father to be new to them or mm. to be estranged from them so mm. they feel like he abandoned them mm. because of this. Uh, number one. Number two, I, ju it, it, I just realized that he wasn't sinning. It wasn't mm. like he's sinning. It's mm. just that he has made up this decision mm. and I, I, it's my duty as a wife to support mm. him. I felt that it was uh, my duty as a wife to support him. And, uh, and so we, I just, and it wasn't like it's such a difficult thing. It wasn't like I'm straining to travel a long way. In fact, I had a little car. I would just uh, mm -hmm. drive uh, and go, uh, arrive at the place and it's a, a weekend. So I would either go to the college or he would come to the school. Yeah. And uh, now when I was still teaching, but now when I became, um, when I, I, I came to work for Christian Learning Material Center, I was with him all the time. So this so was okay. Was so good. you were there for like two years? Two years. And then he finishes school. Uh -huh. He finishes. As soon as I see the finishing is coming, I think the teacher in me told me this was just a break. This was a commercial to work for Christian Learning Material Center. Mm -hmm. I'm missing my class, classroom work. 
So I I applied at that point. I applied to Rosinga School. Mm. There was a lady who had taught there for the longest time, Mrs. Dodman. Maybe mm. you know her, uh, Reverend Dodman's uh, wife. Her name is Jean. Um, so I talked to Jean Dodman. I said, I want to go back to teaching, mm. but I want to go to Rosinga. Mm. Because it was an international school, it had a primary and high school, and that mm. would suit me with my children mm. and so on. I didn't even know whether they, what fringe benefits they have. So she said, yeah, you come apply, write a letter and bring it and let's see. So I wrote a letter, took it to her. And before long, I was called for the interview and I took it. And, and they gave me the job. And they told me that we have fringe benefits of two children free of school fees. And you have two. And I have two. I couldn't ask for more. I couldn't ask for more. So, so, uh -huh. so you got the job. So I got the job. The uh -huh. children were in and I was set to go. Amen. Yeah. And meanwhile, my husband has finished uh, the, the, the training, for a theological training. And he was very involved in the Nairobi Pentecostal Church, mm -hmm. now SITAM. Mm -hmm. as, uh, he was a deacon board member, mm -hmm. he was mm -hmm. a deacon board member. The pastor, because there was only one pastor, a mm -hmm. Canadian man, his name is Upton, mm -hmm. uh, Roy Upton, uh, offered him a position of come and be an assistant to me. You know, there is a difference between, be, between being an assistant and an assistant too. An assistant too means you are the messenger. You mm. are like, if I need, go run, go get this, do this. A bit like a PA type, but really mm. a, a less, more demeaning mm. than a PA. So my husband uh, joined and he, he told him, Roy Upton, pastor, told him, I will give you a stipend. Mm. I will not give you a salary. A mm. stipend is pocket money for a university student. Mm. This is a master's student. Mm. This guy has graduated with a master's and is getting a stipend. But because my husband, in, in him, he knew what he wanted. He wanted ministry. He wanted to serve people, God's people. Mm. So he wasn't really money is there or money is not there. Position is there or not. It's a demeaning position or it's not. That wasn't his mm. issue. Mm. He just wanted to serve. So he accepted. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. And then, okay, I get that, but you're the wife with two children and bills to pay. Yes. How was that for and you? And rent to pay. And rent to pay. Yeah, because now we've left the, the college here, which was free, uh, free rent, free accommodation, and now we are, we are hired a house on Ngong Road. It must be paid for transport to school and back from school. Sometimes we would use a school bus, but you don't want to look so... Uh, leaning or dependent on the mm, school, mm. you know. So he was offered this job of, and he was paid 5,000 shillings. 1,000, 2, 3, 4, 5,000 shillings is what mm. he was paid. Okay, it's a long time ago, but still 5,000 shillings for a mm -hmm. master's person. Mm -hmm. or, who has been it? working. Who has been working and has been uh, getting commission because of being in sales like that. Uh, but one, one more time, my husband felt this is what I want to do. Mm. It may not be this is the money I'm, I'm worth, but this is what I want to do. And this is but, where I'm supposed to be. So he just stuck. He just stuck. There was, uh, when the ministry began, I, I, I began seeing like, so we strained for you to train mm. with the hope that you'll come out and make make good mm. of the loss Training. of the little that we were, so that we begin to enjoy but now it's it's even getting drier than it should be <laughs> um but because he was so set on it he just stayed one time i went to that pastor mm. and i told him uh, pastor Upton, how much do you and your wife just two people as we are four you two people how much do you use a month he looked at me and said ada are you living above your means i said what do you mean Living above our means, 5,000 shillings can feed four people. And for you, two people, how much do you? So he, he almost threw me out of the office. <laughs> but he said, well, Ada, you just have to tailor your material, your dress according to your, to your material. material. So if your material is 5,000 shillings, you tailor it according. What did that do to your spirit? And this is the church you still serve. Yeah. I mean, this is where you're still going to. This is your pastor. This is my pastor. 
uh, to tell you the truth, there was a bit of resentment. Mm. There was a resentment toward him and said, uh, these people don't know. But you know, the, at that time, there was a funny understand, a strange, let me, strange understanding of, uh, of church. Mm. You know, like I never saw those pastors, mm. whether it is him, whether it is the one who had been there called Marvin Thomas, or whether it is Pastor Dennis White. I never saw those people giving offering. I never mm. saw them. Maybe Pastor White gave, I could be wrong on that. But the first two pastors and their wives, I never saw them checking their handbag, bring out money to give offering. So it was like, oh, the members are the ones to do this, this, but the, the, the leaders don't. So when now it was like, uh, you, your husband will earn this. I just thought it like, okay, maybe it's the same understanding that to be a pastor, you are at a different level from if there is a junior pastor or if there is just a member. So let me not make a big do out of it. I see there is a disconnect of um, how somebody, you, you are two and you ca you're earning this much and these are four, but they're earning this much and they are to live and make do there. Let me just understand and move on. Mm. Because I'm in salvation. You didn't bring me salvation. You found me already born again. Let me just pursue my God. Do you know, Pastor Carol, that has been my strength, I must say. I just decide, I followed Jesus as a young girl. I accepted him and he's real to me. Let me follow him. Let me pursue mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. There may be frustration from members, from the leaders, from uh, other the children peers, that I'm teaching. Even from your peers. Even my peers. There may be that uh, uh, looking down upon. But I came. I am a born again Christian. I will serve God this way. Let me move on. So yes, I was bruised by the comment of this uh, man. But I, I made up my mind to just pursue God. Mm -hmm. to follow God. Number one. Number two, those missionaries never used to stay for more than two years. Mm -hmm. if, uh, let me not say that. Uh, two, it was a contract of two years, mm -hmm. renewable ones. Mm -hmm. So the longest a missionary would say was four years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I knew also that he's not here to stay. God mm -hmm. will bring somebody else maybe who is more mm -hmm. understanding and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I didn't let that bug me so mm -hmm. much. So you served, he started off as an assistant, and then eventually, uh, tell me about the progression. Uh, the into, progression, into I was in Sunday school myself. Mm -hmm. I felt as a teacher, let me also help in the house of the mm -hmm. Lord. So I was in Sunday school, and uh, my husband was that uh, assistant too. But um, after, after a year, mm -hmm. uh, this uh, pastor needed to go back, mm -hmm. to, uh, Pastor Roy Upton needed to go back to mm -hmm. Canada, mm -hmm. and another pastor was mm -hmm. to come. Uh, he, this other pastor came, his, his name was Elkana. Mm -hmm. He came and he looked and he checked out and he said, this is not my calling. Mm. So he just, after coming with everything, introduction, what, he just said, I don't think this is where I should be. Mm. And he packed his bags and left, left the church high and dry without <laughs> a pastor. My <laughs> husband is there, yeah, but you see for him, he hasn't even been acclimatized to this. And, and can I say that he hadn't been accepted as mm. a pastor, really? Because mm. so, the church was quite a pity then. That is it. That is it. It was the church. It was the church and the pastors that were there, like the uh, first pastor was, uh, when we got in, was Pastor Thomas. Marvin Thomas was his name. So it was like uh, Pastor Thomas has said. Pastor Thomas has said. So it was their, the gospel truth, the pastor. Then when Upton said, Pastor Upton has said, Pastor Upton has said. So it was like, it was a very one man driven thing. There wasn't mm. a possibility of another one coming. But listen to this. Then uh, because of the emergency of the Elkanah, it, the, we, know, we used to say it was an Elkanoff. You know, like Elkanah <laughs> got off, <laughs> ran off. Elkanoff. Elkanoff. Uh, as, he went, as he left and left the church kind of in a, in a, in, hanging uh, the Pentecostal Assemblies of Canada quickly had to source for somebody to come. And that somebody was Pastor Dennis White. Mm. And Dennis White arrived. He came first without his wife. He came and preached for a week in the church. Mm. Everybody fell in love with him. Mm. Everybody, even us, even me and Bishop, we said, this is a guy we can work mm. with. So long story uh, short, he arrived with his wife after maybe a month or two. 
he now came as the pastor. Mm. And at that point, mm, friends of ours whom we had been at the university with, now they are in the Shell industry or in the East Africa industries, you know, making the corporate money. progression. Yeah, and money. They, they, they were telling us, but now what's this? Why are you the messenger of this place with your masters? We are, you are not even like us who still have our one degree, you have two degrees. How can you be here like this? So there was that agitation. I said, no, why don't you go to America, go train and come back? You can even be the, the principal or the whatever, dean of uh, AIU of uh, mm. Nairobi, the school where you started. Why don't you? So there was that agitation agitating to go but when pastor white so when pastor white came we told him mm, we are not sure about our stay we may be th we are thinking of going uh, overseas for our further education and pastor white was so sweet both of them with his wife it was the, like the second night of their arrival mm -hmm. they said you know what he pastor white said you know what bonnie he would call my husband bonnie said bonnie i don't know you and you may not know me but I'm in your country. I need your help. So I would ask that you don't go. Mm -hmm. I would ask that you work with me. I would ask that you uh, uh, help me settle. And just for me, that care, that plea that I am needed, I'm not a by the way, I'm not just mm -hmm. a spare wheel, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that spoke to me. Mm -hmm. And then that same two nights, because we gave a reception to them, a member of the church gave a reception uh, to their arrival. Mm -hmm. So there was a, a white lady in the, in the church, who had been in the church, and uh, she wanted to get very close to this pastor and sister white, who have just arrived. He said, I can show you, uh, Mrs. White, I can show you where to buy food, where to work. And the sister white looked at her and she said, no, 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 these guys will show us where to buy. So he is a white American person. Maybe she was in the embassy. I don't know. I don't mm. know what she was doing here. Or maybe she was a missionary. I mm. forget. But here she is trying to show this new mm. couple that this has is come. Our, this is us. And then yeah. there's us and there's them. Them. So I can show you where we shop. Mm. Not where everybody shops, mm. but where we shop. And um, so to help you settle. But this lady had the, the discernment, discernment to say no. I have come into this world. I'm not in America. Mm. I'm in Kenya. I want to connect with these people. Because the it's a young people. couple that are here mm. in the ministry where I am coming. So they are the right people to, to show me. And that again settled me. Mm. So Pastor White has spoken that about, I need you. And the wife says, if it's shopping, there's this room guy's for you here. Me. Yeah. I, oh, I, wow. I, for me, that really settled me. And it's because of Pastor White that we stayed and we grew a lot. We grew a lot in ministry. Not just spiritually, but ministry, how to handle ministry, how to tolerate people, how to um, um, understand people. Maybe I should use that, not tolerate, but understand people and uh, cope in ministry. So they took you literally under their wings and were available to not just work with you, but to pastor you. To pastor and us to and, mentor. and whenever there was any need uh, of, of, that they had, they would ask us first. Mm. And whenever they saw like, are you okay with this? They would, they would make sure we are comfortable. It may not have been more money because you can't just come and begin to over, mm. overrule things. But uh, there was that care. Out of, uh, several times it was just out of their own pocket. Like oh, he would wow. go, he would tell uh, my husband, let's go up the road to have a cup of tea. So they go up the road, they, let's swing by the petrol station. Then he would put petrol. That mm. kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, he'd say, let's put petrol on that. It reminds me of the pastor who Pastor Tony first served. He's called Ron Somers. And mm. he did mm. that for us. And maybe you're watching and you're a senior pastor, you're in leadership. There is nothing as important as loving people. Mm. Because mm. that person who's, you know, the person who's your, um, your assistant or who looks junior to you, you don't know where they'll be tomorrow. That is You always... don't know where they'll be tomorrow. And you don't know for what reason. The Lord has put you there. Amen. And I like what yeah. you've said, that it wasn't about the money, mm. really. It mm. was about being validated as a person and someone actually looking at you and seeing you. Yeah. yeah. Seeing you. That was the thing. That yeah. was the thing. The, 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 that, that eye of seeing what is there, 
that God wants me to do, not what is there that I can, can get, get for myself. That I, I commend my husband so much for that because he was clear about that. And later on, he told me, he said, I knew missionaries can't be here forever. I knew mm. a day will come when the, and surely that is what happened. And uh, So like, you served with Pastor White for how long? For, so it's 86 it is 87 until 97, like like 11 years, mm. like 11 years, 14 years, mm. 14 years we were together. Mm. And each, from as early as I can remember, he, he would say, I want to be the last missionary. You have mm. enough people here in Kenya who mm. can lead this church. Mm. He would say it from the pulpit, not mm. in the boardroom, some quiet place, mm. from the pulpit. And that... And people would say, oh, and who will, will it be? And Bishop, uh, Pastor Adoya is there. And he was just mm -hmm. steadfast in his own uh, mm. quietness. And a time came. Mm. A time came and Pastor White said, you know what? A Nairobi Pentecostal church, I have to move on in order for a Kenyan to take place. That Kenyan, I have not found any other other than Bonfast Adoya. So he said wow. that and... That at an AGM. Mm. So he said, I will not leave the country. I will not quit uh, uh, Nairobi Pentecostal Church. I will go and begin a branch in Karen. So he came to begin the branch here in Karen, and we were left at the headquarter at, uh, uh, on Valley Road. How was the transition? Like, how was the transition? And how was the reception of the people? The one that you can feel free when, to share. When it was announced, when it was announced in the church, when Pastor White said, from such and such a day, I'm going to be, not to be here, I'll be at Valley Road, at uh, uh, Karen. Karen. Um, it was an AGM, like I've said, they, we were seated in the auditorium at Valley Road. I was, uh, there was, uh, I was just in the group, in mm. the congregation. I wasn't like seated at a particular mm. place. And um, uh, when he announced that there was a, a gentleman behind me, his name is Kimani, mm. and he has since passed. Mm. Uh, Kimani said loud and clear, whether he want, he said it for my ears to hear, or he said it as a slip of the tongue and realized I was there and I heard. Mm -hmm. um, he said, we will all live and be at Sitam Kari. We will be at NPC Kari, and there will be nobody here. And so, these are people you've been serving? Yeah. So we finished. The, the, the AGM was over. And I went to Kimani and said, Kimani, I want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Me, this is the me. This is the Ada. If you don't know me, that's how I deal. I don't gossip. I don't uh, feel bitter and uh, feel bad when I see you. I chimba, chimba, my face. No, 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 no. I tell you, this, Jesus told us how to do it. You go to the person. So I went to Kimani and said, You know what, Kimani? The God that we serve that saved us as young people and we are, uh, we are still in that youthful time. That God does not honor the skin. Mm. That God says he's a God of no partiality. Mm. And as long as he lives and I live in him, you will live to see what he will do. So I told him, people, tomorrow, all of these people may be in Karen, the way you have said, but there will be people here who will have come from that bar and that uh, drunken place and that, and they will come here and they will be born again and ministry will go on. Kimani looked at me and it's like, he didn't know how to say sorry. The following day, he was at the church. The, uh, the, the time when Pastor White left, he was in the church. He never went to Karen. And I'm telling you, like I've told you, he has since passed, he passed right there. The way I talked to him, the way I challenged him, in love. I wasn't bitter, I wasn't angry, I just told him. I said, you know, God is no respecter of persons. Uh, you know, so he, 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 I think he got convicted. And from that time, anytime Kimani saw me, he would run either to find me a seat or to carry my bag or something. He just... It just ministered it to him. him. It, yeah, hit, it him hit him that God had called you. Yes. Let me, you know, maybe you're watching, you really, maybe they don't understand what Sitam was like. Like, this was the church where the president used to go. It was the biggest Pentecostal church then. That we, and very, no, glam, for lack of a, no, but no, and, no, and glamorous. Yeah, glamorous. <laughs> glamorous. And also I would say non-aligned in that there wasn't, 
any politics in it where you will find uh, their fights, wrangles in church. Yeah. And there wasn't. There was, and it was just a church that is run the way a church should be run. And you know, <laughs> at that time, we had, I think it was only KBC, VOK. Mm. So every Sunday we got to see what was happening because the president was coming to that coming church. Coming there, exactly. And here you exactly. were always run by uh, missionaries, predominantly a rich pe person's church, well, from true, an outsider's point of view, because yeah. I never came, but yeah. except to watch Heaven's Gate and Hell's Flames. Yes, yes. But, you yes. know, and very affluent, very, and you're the first uh, indigenous people to take over the church from the missionaries. Mm. What was like that? How, what, how was that? What was that like for you? I think we go back to that Limuru girls. Yes. Yeah, they were, because for me, I was so already exposed, uh, uh, exposed in a way that really it's not the skin. It's how you, the value, the values that you hold, mm. the, um, the God that you serve, who is not going to change. And also, incidentally, even Bishop went to Nairobi school, which mm. was very, very high, white. high cost also yeah, and very white. And so we were, exposure we had. Mm. It's just that maybe the the our background were not as affluent as a minister of so and so or the commissioner of so and so son or daughter mm. we were just ordinary people uh, an ordinary couple but as time went by people realized hey these people know what they are driving where yeah. they are driving this church yeah, to yeah. so they began to honor initially i would say mm, I think there was the courage of the word of God, of the, of the backing of, of God in my life. For example, uh, um, I, I, can, I can quote, there, there's a gentleman in the church, he's still there even mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. His name is Mr. Moisaka, a mm -hmm. senior government official mm -hmm. in Moise era. Mm -hmm. And um, so when the church was handed to Bonfas Adoyo, the following week, a senior government officer called Mr. Mwaisaka mm -hmm. and he said, Mumearibu sasa. Sasa ndiyo mumearibu kanisa yetu. So Mwaisaka says, Tumearibu aje. You have given that church to a Kenyan. Now we'll be having fights and wrangles and power fights. Why did you do that? Why didn't you? And Mwaisaka said, let's wait and see. And he came and told us, Mwaisaka told us, he said, what do anasema? You know, if you know my saka, I talk Swahili quite a bit. And he says, what when I say, my ikanisa sasa me aribika. And I, um, Pastor Carol, I went to God and I said, God, I never vied for this position. Mm. I never campaigned for this co position. I never even knew I would be in this kind of a city. It is your own doing, Lord. And, if it, and because it is your own doing, fight for me. Because I don't know how to fight. I don't know how to now say, I don't want to be this. I found myself in this position. Fight for me. And God gave favor. Let mm. me help someone out there. If you are out there and you're wondering or you're feeling uh, betrayed, you're feeling people have let you down, those that you have helped have let you down, they are very ungrateful. Let me help you right now. Say, persist on. The Bible says, looking to Jesus, the author and finish. So focus on Christ who called you. Don't focus on the people whom you have helped, whom you have mentored, whom you have, because there you will be. In fact, the word of God says, cursed is he whose trust is in man. So if your trust is in a man, you thought the man who would do this would help, you will be disappointed. But Jesus does not disappoint, Pastor Carol. I know you have proved that even in your own life. Mm. Jesus does not disappoint. He does not. And he finally, he takes you through, it may be a windy road, but he's taking you upward. He's mm. not plumating you. He, he does, I, I like to say he does not graduate as backwards. No, he, he does not graduate, graduate as backwards. backwards. I like that yeah. one too. So you... So how long did were you lead pastors at, at the NPC, which later became SITA? Maybe you yes. can talk a little bit about that. About that. Uh, from 2001, mm. and we left, we uh, retired in 2010. So you mm. can say nine, ten years. Yeah. Nine, ten years. All together, 20-some really, years, almost 20. 24. 24, 24, 24 years, from yeah. the time we had been. Mm. But really, let me correct that. Because when Pastor White left to, to I would say 2001 is when he became bishop. Mm. But in terms of being senior pastor of, uh, of uh, after Pastor White left, 
it is from 97. So that is um, like for uh, 14 years yes, he had been yes. in that lead mm, position. Mm. But bishop, bishop, and with that title and proper uh, coronation, it was for those nine, ten years. Okay. Yes. So how did it, did NPC move to become Sitam? Sitam. Okay. Then this this is a thing also. The truth about uh, the mission work mm. or the missionaries coming to mm. run and the way I've told you that it was a stint of two years renewable once, mm. not twice. Mm. So four years at most would be this church then was a church that is being maintained. It's mm. not growing. Mm. It, the idea was not to grow it. Yeah. The idea is to maintain it. Mm. Just for it to be known in the mission uh, report back home that the church in Nairobi, Nairobi Pentecostal Church, is still going on now. The membership is mm. 200 and no longer 100. That type of a report. But it's, a, it's only a Kenyan. And one more time I would say Bishop Adoyo had that impression in his spirit, I can put it, mm -hmm. he, he knew that so long as we are Nairobi Pentecostal Church, we are stuck with Nairobi. Mm -hmm. But this ministry is doing wonders. Why should we not have a branch in Mombasa? Why should we not have a branch in Nakuru, a branch in Kisumu? Why not? And so it, it, it began, he began saying, let's branch out. Let's mm -hmm. branch out. Now, you cannot be in Kisumu and say I'm Nairobi Pentecostal Church, Church Kisumu. Kisumu. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. Good. So uh, it just, uh, now, mm -hmm. because our, our, our theme or our brand or mm -hmm. what was Christ is, is the, the answer. answer. Christ is the answer was our brand. So it was like, um, uh, so why don't we say Christ is the answer ministries? So that uh, it, uh, that way it covers everyone, whether you are in um, um, Eldoret or you are in Kisi or you are where, you are still Christ is the answer ministers. Mm. So that's how it just transited when Nairobi Pentecost Church, uh, Pentecostal Church began going outside of Nairobi. Mm. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, my husband may not have been charismatic like Dennis White or mm. any other person, but one thing that he had, he had the grace of expansion. And he's very the, steady. The, the expansion, Pastor Caro, was amazing. You know, it, that, that thing was prowling. We had the director of operations, who is your member of your yes, church, Jemima, Jemima. Muturi. Yes. One time, Jemima Muturi came to my office and says, Mama Doyo, this thing is growing so fast. I feel like we may, it can collapse on us. It mm. was prowling. You mm. are opening that branch. The, we are opening the radio station, the, the, Hope, the, TV. the Hope TV, the college park, 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 park yeah. is going on. It was like, it was just breathing expansion. Mm. Boom, boom, boom. And then that time Gong was open, um, Parklands was open, Kisumu was open. Mm. And the director of operations, Jemima Muturi, told me, this thing is growing fast. Mm. When, when uh, Pastor White left to go to start uh, Sitam Karen, uh, my husband at that point just said, I'm going to use task forces. He, he, he said, I'm putting in place task forces. So task forces of the unemployed, mm -hmm. task forces of bankers, task forces of teachers in the church so that you know one another and what you can do as a team because you have a common base here. Mm. And that just again multiplied because people found, oh, even you, you are a teacher. And what school are we? And what are you? And what can we do together? And oh, you, you are a banker. Which bank do you? And so there wasn't, there was that awareness, a sense of belonging to one another and connectivity. And uh, then it was like, um, once in a while, I don't know how often it would be, it would be this task force taking the service. So creating awareness of what we do and what Christ has done in this particular industry of banking or in whatever industry it was, it is. And it was just so revealing. Yeah. And people, it's like the strengths that had been underground, strong as they were, came alive on top and now yeah. it could only but flap. So, and I pray that God will give us an opportunity to talk to uh, Bishop Adoyo himself. Mm. But this is your story as well. My story. And, and one of the things, or one of the reasons why you're standing here in your capacity as Ada is because for the first time there was then, of course we'd had the Judimbogwas and, and others, but you came out as a voice for yourself 
as a pastor's wife, in your own capacity, influencing in your own space, mm. starting with the radio and on and on to the Pastors' Wives Fellowship, to Christian Women of Kenya. Tell us about that journey. Mm. Mm. And even finding your space, because remember, you do want to go to Bible school. You're like, mm. Mimi, everyone operate in their own grace. I'm called mm. to be a teacher. Mm. And it's true, you are, and you are a good teacher, but God was growing your platform. Yes. When did that much. realization happen for you? And how did you come into this new space that the Lord was creating for you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, good question, uh, Caro. Um, the teaching background and being in that international school exposed me to many parents. Many, I think I want to begin there. Mm. It, it put me with so many parents of the, the young executive parents mm. with their, their children in primary and going to high school. So that was a quiet platform. I, I had mm. that. And in that school, I was not the headmistress, but they called me a senior mistress. And I dealt with the children direct. If a parent had any trouble, they were told, go and see Mrs. Adoya. And for some reason, I would sort them out. Whatever may mm. have been the reason. Somehow it was just, I remember even a teacher in that school was having trouble with another teacher. Then a friend of ours just said, go and tell Mrs. Adore this. It will be sorted. And somehow I would sort. I don't know how. I would, mm. It would just ease out. And so by the time I'm now, I took an early retirement from teaching when now I understood what ministry was about. I, I came to support my husband because now he was uh, the leader and there was a demand. And, and, even, and you're growing. And I'm growing. And the, the ministry is growing. And it was like um, also... Um, uh, I would get voices or people telling me and saying, you know, there was a single lady who was a pastor, a, a lady pastor who was single. Mm. And uh, different ones would tell me, just imagine, Mama Adoyo, if I have fought with my husband, my husband has beaten me, will I come and tell Mary, Pastor Mary, mm. Mm. about my trouble? She's not married, she doesn't. I think we need you here as mm. a married woman so that we have a place to run to, so that we have a mother whom we can uh, run to. That came again and again, quietly and without force, without pushing. And I felt, well, let me be there because now even Sister White had moved off. Mm. So the mother figure was actually wanting, mm. yeah, was missing. And so that's how um, I, came, I, I came to be in that space. But... Um, Another, another one, without plan, I, I think I just look at God and I get amazed. Uh, another one that came without my pulling or pushing for it was when the radio began. Mm. The radio, uh, Bishop just said we should have a radio station. We have been using KBC for the longest we can have our own. It was like, but what is that? How does that work? Long and short, it was in place. And then there was uh, the manager of that station. Her name was me, a lady. And she told me, when I had just uh, left Rusinga, she told me, Mrs. Adoyo, come and be helping us with a program for two hours once a week. I said, what? Two hours? I don't have that kind of time. Two hours on a radio? No. Then she said, just come and give it a try. So pull and push, pull and push. And then I said, okay, I will come. But on a regular week after week, I'm not committing myself. So I came and uh, uh, she said, try it. So I did it once, I did it twice, maybe a month, two months. By then, there were now calls coming in and saying, um, the program was the one people know, question mm -hmm. and answers with one boy in Buru. Mm -hmm. She would uh, ask questions, questions would come in from people out there mm -hmm. and I'm asked and I answer. Before long, it was like, we want. To, uh, what does that lady say? Even if it's another program, say, what would Mrs. Adoya say about that? What, so it just became, and I would be on the streets and somebody says, is that Mrs. Adoya? Another time I was on the phone, I was talking. I said, are you Mrs. Adoya? Yes, you know me. He said, no, I don't know you, but I know the voice, you know. And mm -hmm. you know, in ministry, in ministry, Pastor Carol, what I fought against was what I debate, how can I put it? What um, I, I, I talked with God about was God. If you knew you were to make me a pastor's wife, ungo ni patia sauti ya kuimba. Nyembamba. Ya kuimba. Sasa hii sauti ya speak and people are just thinking there is a man speaking or a word speaking. Why didn't you give me a, a, 
So I despised my voice mm. because I could not sing. I, I still up till today cannot sing in a choir or lead worship or any of those Those things. traditional things that pastors, that pastors wives, wives are supposed to be uh, doing. So I, I um, but then when this radio program came and I was on it, one of the things that was distinctive was the voice. voice. Was the voice. The very thing you despise. Can I speak to you? The very thing you despise in ministry, mm. my dear viewer, it is the very thing that God is going to use to surprise you and to yeah. raise you up. He will not use that to take you down. It's true. So that voice, I, 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 up till today, I, I, I feel ashamed that I ever talked to God about that and saying my voice is not a good one. And so uh, in 2007, mm. 2008, post-election violence that many of us who are older remember, uh, some lady, just a lady who were teaching with that Rusinga, mm. she said, Mrs. Adoyo, my, my age mate and colleague, she said, Mrs. Adoyo, you have to do something. The country is burning. Mm. Because at that point, my husband had said, for me, I've done the best I can to reconcile, to put people together. But so some, a woman just called me. She said, do something. I said, like what? Call us to come to Valley Road. We'll come and pray. At least call us to pray because the country was at a standstill and yes. fighting and killing was going on. So I said, well, that one cost me nothing. We all, I will facilitate the place. So we were there and women came by the numbers to just call upon God. I, I guess everybody was praying, mm. Carol. Everybody mm. was praying for our country. But now to assemble there. And from that... Um, uh, that prayer, that particular day, say, let's pray regularly. Can we pray this uh, every so often? I think it was once a week for one hour at a given uh, time at Valley Road. And it just moved. And then it, it, it's almost like it outgrew Valley Road. So one time we said, let's actually now pray at uh, the Kenyatta International uh, Convention okay. Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, from there is, after that, International Conference uh, Convention Center, the, the, the country, Ilitulia, Kiasi. And then also, it was like the lady said, let's go to Eldoret. So I said, yeah, let's go to Eldoret. And the, somehow they would just, I don't even understand, they would just come. Vehicles would be found and uh, you, go, so we went to Eldoret. We were there for a week. Women, Kenyan women, we were there praying over Eldoret. You know, that was the most... Mm. Uh, the greatest atrocity mm. was done. They are burning mm. people mm. in the church. Mm. No, mm. no, no. That was just terrible. So we were there to pray and uh, ask God to forgive us and ask the people to forgive. And we were there for some years, mobilizing the Eldoret women to join Genuine. us who have come. From there, we were on our way to Kisumu. Again, we were in Kisumu for our, like a week. Just like that. People, you are, you are ad hoc. It's not like uh, the members of the church. It's not like the ones who are, any woman was coming and people were coming by the number. You know, you know what I'm finding so amazing about your story is that first, first and foremost, let me be honest, I always thought you're a firstborn, always. Mm. So for me to hear that you're a middle child, because middle children, sorry to say, are almost, uh, sometimes forgotten. Mm. And you can easily hide there and say, you know, mm. what do I have to speak? I mean you have six people ahead of you and another five so those are 11 people ahead of you and there are these other six behind you really by the time it's your turn to speak even the person hearing is tired it's you know tired of hearing. and then yeah. you're a woman mm. and you you know you have a big voice mm. but you're quite tiny mm. i mean True. relatively mm. and then you know that god chose you and put you in a platform to use you and sometimes like we say sometimes you look at yourself and you just dismiss you're like you're yeah, like that uh, was me soul you that know the way me. god was saying i have chosen you you're bigger you're this and god is trying to tell you you have this you have this and saying i mean i really don't know how mm, to mm, to raise and shine no, no, you know that's but me. to see that's me. and 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 you know the fact that you've even said that you used to feel intimidated I mean, feel like i can't sing I, I would never have thought, thought of that. Yes, because yeah, I remember meeting you and telling you when I was feeling so overwhelmed, I've just become a pastor's. We don't have pastors in my family. I've become a pastor's wife. I don't know whether I'm coming or going. I have small kids. Remember at ICC, yeah, I told, told you, you need to speak to us. You need to mm. make time mm. to speak. And you took the challenge and you've made time to speak to many women yes. about that and about finding your voice. What was the most... Um, the biggest challenge for you in this journey? The biggest challenge, the biggest. 
I think acceptance, acceptance. Mm-hmm. I, I had a number, it may not have been the majority, but they allowed enough to kind of dismiss and say, mm. I don't think you qualify. Uh, I don't know. I, I think in the earlier part of the ministry, we struggled with finances mm. because of the, how little he was being paid. And then uh, we have a family and we have bills to pay. We struggled with that and we didn't do side business. Now I see pastors. I was in um, Loy Talk Talk last yesterday and uh, the, there's a pastor there with a wife with a nice big sh- uh, shop that's doing very well. For us, it was just single file. Mm. You know, you kind are, of like you, us. yes, you go to church, you pray for people. You, if you are not praying for people, you are in the prayer room praying for the ministry. And that was it. So um, that struggle made us certain people to look down upon us and so reduced that confidence of ability. Uh, if your God is this big, let's see how he's providing. Mm. Mm. And um, so that for me was intimidating. That Mm. was for me would tone me down where instead of being where I should be. And uh, for the longest time we were renting, we we Mm. never had our own place and people from behind younger than us are having their own place, all that. I think for me, that was a, 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 a challenge. I would say not being accepted just because of the economic standing Mm. that um, we may have had. Uh, but like I, I told you earlier, and that I said, uh, the, 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 the boldness that I had of my God made me to just speak on and move on. That just way. stand yeah. anyway. Just mm. keep going anyway. Keep going. I think yeah. keep going all the same. So I, I've kept going up till today. Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes people think you're bold. I've had people say, you know, you, you, you're bold. And I just like, I'm like, I'm not bold no. by any stretch of imagination. Mm. In fact, I'm scared like 99.999% yeah. of the time. But then there's that, you know, when, Jer- is it Jeremiah who said mm. that there's this fire in your in belly me. that you just yeah. cannot keep quiet. quiet. You yeah. know, you just find yourself doing it and you're like, oh my God. Mm. In fact, I was thinking, if I was ever to write a bo- another book, I would write, I think I'd name it, you know, here I am, God, use use them. Because you feel like, please, this world has many people. Just mm. use some, somebody pick else. On somebody else. Yes. I just want to come to heaven, yeah. you know, live uh, Chiniareda yeah. and just True. make it. That is it. You know, that but God it. has different plans for us. And even, um, I, I didn't mention that, but when uh, I was, before even I became friends with uh, uh, Bonfast Adario, I, as girls in the university, we said we want to get married, but not to a pastor. Not to a pastor. Uh, so many of us would say, not a pastor. Let him just be born again. So, you know, to find yourself, you've landed on a pastor. You've landed in this position. Now there's demand of expectation. I think the word I can use there is expectation. So much expectation. There is no place where you are trained as a pastor's wife. That's why I have a passion for pastor's wives because I know many who are like that. You find yourself, you are now being called Mrs. Pastor. And yesterday you were an ordinary person Mm, over there. mm. You don't know now how to upgrade yourself to here without this information. So with all that, I I go to say that there is need for somebody to support, to back you up rather than to tear you. Oh, Mm. why are your children uh, buying sweets instead Mm. of being in Sunday school? You Mm, know, criticizing mm. or finding fault like that. Yeah, but... God has helped me and I thank God for that. So talk to us a little bit about your pastor's wife's fellowship because I think it's important and I know that I could do better. Mm. Let me use this public opportunity to apologize. It's okay. But I know what it's done for me. The times when I've been there and just reading, being part of the wall and being part of the movement. Mm. And I'm sure there's a pastor's wife there who's wondering, am I alone? And mm. and yet God is doing something in this fellowship. Yes. Talk to us a little bit about that. Number one, it is so sad, uh, Pastor Carol, that... Uh, we have this forum and there are people, even in Nairobi, forget about somewhere in Migori or some far place, who say, we don't know this fellowship exists. So somebody somewhere is, uh, is uh, depressed or is frustrated with ministry and yet there is um, a, an, an outlet mm. where they could connect and uh, be helped. And so I said this, the mistakes that I made as a young pastor's wife I would not like any pastor's wife to go through Mm. I would not like the Bible says in Titus chapter 2 verse 4 
It says older women teach younger women. Mm. I feel like I have so much that I, I have learned along the way, acceptance, mm. expectation, children, all this. I have so much that I, it would be sad for me to go down the grave with it not mm. having impacted someone. Mm. And let me tell you, Carol, as much as I've said that there are some people in Nairobi or where who may not know about pastor's uh, wife's fellowship, I am so grateful to God that on, uh, uh, like I've told you, on Saturday morning, I left here at 5, right here. I left here at 5 a.m. I was heading to Loy Tok Tok. You go past Loy Tok Tok and go to some other 15, 20 minutes drive in, inward towards Taita Tabeta, and there's a place called Elasit. Mm. There were women there gathered. There must have been 200 pastor's wives. Amen. Pastor's wives. And in that group, there were like 30 pastors themselves. The pastors who could make time to come and they sat there from morning till three o'clock in the afternoon. Just so for me, that is, I am so gratified by that. At the same time in Siaya, Siaya, there was another meeting of pastor's wives. I was to go, but I couldn't be in two places at a go. So I sent um, uh, one of my committee members, her name is Beatrice Machuma. She was there having, again, they were like, uh, I saw the photograph, maybe like 60 pastor's wives. Over there. You know, we are not talking about 60 women. We are talking about pastor's, pastor's wives. wives. So see the congregation behind those women. And look at those ones of, uh, of uh, Loi Tok Tok, the congregation behind them. Then at the same time, in Machakos, Sarah Mukala, the chairperson of mm. Pastor's Wives Kenya, mm. she was having a huge group there. Those ones must have been a hundred. Pastor's Wives. I say, my friend, um, even if I was to die today, I will go a grateful yeah. woman. That it's not in vain. There are some people who, who know about this uh, Pastor's Wives uh, Fellowship, and they have gone ahead and begun similar Mm. Uh, similar movements yeah. of pastors' wives. And uh, my view is I don't want to make it look like if it's not with Mrs. Ado, it shouldn't be. You know, I shouldn't feel like it must be under me. But I, I also say if something is being done, why do you invent the wheel? Reinvent mm. the wheel. So just tell those younger women and say, let's go. We will now have a chapter of younger women. We'll have a chapter of this. Uh, uh, I was actually going like to say that. the same thing because one of the things that I personally liked is that it, it's interdenominational. So there is no pressure of feeling that, you know, I must be a member of uh, um, what is it? Um, yeah. Pentecostal Assemblies of God yes. or Assemblies of God or Deliverance Church. That you could have, like, I remember we used to have this chapter meeting in our church mm. and we, were, we had some of them were Quakers, some from the Anglican. I mean, at the end of the day, you're just Christian women loving Jesus, serving mm. in different congregations, mm. going through similar challenges. Yes. And, and, and then starting a chapter makes a lot of sense because then you already have a covering. Yes. But I know that one of the challenges has been denominationalism. Mm. And, you mm. know, and it's only some, I mean, we cannot exhaust that here, mm. but it's just something that I would want us to think about because as a pastor's wife, you already have so many challenges. And sometimes... I don't want to go and talk to my fellow pastors who are working with me. Sometimes Above. I don't even yeah. want to go and talk to exactly. somebody from my space yeah. because that is the space of pain at that time. At that I time. need to go to a safe Correct. place because I also need to protect them yes. and I need to protect myself as well. Correct. And I think PWK does give that, gives yeah. you an opportunity. And also as a, as a pastor's wife and a minister, you also need a place where you just go sit down. Yeah, and, and be ministered. Not, yes. And be ministered. Yeah. I think that interdenominational bit is very key because, you know, it, it's got multiple benefits. Mm. Because, for example, we are always uh, arranging, organizing conferences. In there, you'll find speakers. In there, you'll find speakers. So you are not just rotating around the, the Deliverance Church uh, speakers, uh, Bishop so-and-so's wife or so-and-so. No, you now have a wider panorama that is set before you to choose from. And then you also can be invited elsewhere instead of just being again in the same space. So I find that, and let me tell you, since the, the, the pastor's wives, because that's what came first before Christian women of mm. Kenya, the pastor's wives, since... My, my eyes being open to see the need of the pastor's wives to be encouraged. The, the, my um, 
sphere of influence has really widened so much. I am a geography teacher, like I told you, mm -hmm. and I knew Kenya, how to draw it. I can close my eyes and draw for you the map of Kenya and put, put Lake Victoria there and the Indian Ocean there and whatnot. I can do that. But I knew it in my head and on paper, nowhere beyond. I, I didn't know Loi Tok Tok all these years. I didn't know Migori. I didn't know. But with pastors' wives, I've gone, I crisscrossed this nation. Like I'm telling you, the other weekend I was in Embu. Then this weekend I'm in, uh, I am in where? Loi Tok Tok. And this gone weekend, this coming weekend, I mean, thicker. Pastor's wives. It's all about pastor's wives. So if you want expansion, let me not say if, because you should be wanting expansion and increase, I would suggest that you get in this because there is a grace of expansion. Even that very ministry will begin to expand, will begin to go beyond just that uh, Kayole, where you began and where you have been and where you'll continue to be. Now you'll be find yourself in Nakuru, you'll find yourself in Kampala. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So you've talked about one of the things that you struggled with the most. When you look back, what is the thing that you are happiest to be part of? You know, you look back and you're like, thank you, God, for giving me a chance to do this. The developing of women, women ministry in mm. Sita. Mm. developing, growing of women ministry in Sita. Mm. And it is that that is my springboard to wherever else I have gone. Because I, I saw it worked. In fact, one time uh, we had a, a women, just when I was still in ministry, women ministry visitation day, a Sunday afternoon. I we would have meetings and we would say, on this particular Sunday, the third Sunday of the month, we will now come and visit those who are bereaved, those who are ailing, those who are what? We will come and do visitation. And or initially it was just a few, a few, a few. Then one time there was a big turnout. And Pastor White, Pastor White, uh, Pastor White was still at the parsonage. Mm -hmm. So he looked through the window on a Sunday afternoon like at 2.30. And she, with his own words, he told me, I saw a sea, Bahari, yeah. a sea of faces mm -hmm. of women I couldn't believe what they were doing. Those women were being distributed. You go to this side, you go to uh, Karen, you go to this side and visit and visit and visit. I saw that women can come out and be a comfort to each other. So it is that that made me to say, why now, since I've finished with Sitam, this was my nursery. This was my seed bed. Why don't I now transplant this grace into the nation of Kenya? Now women just come by themselves. Those yeah. women, Pastor Caro, that I saw in Loi Tok Tok, I could not believe that they were pastor's wives. Not just pastor's wives. They even had a uniform for Amen. Saturday. A uniform. That means this is a group that is saying Committed. we belong. Yeah, we belong. When we see each other like this, we are in this uniform, we are here we are we belong to one another Hallelujah. it gives me so much pleasure so much joy and uh, the same thing with the, uh, with the christian women of kenya it's the same thing the pastor's wives have born the christian women, women of, of kenya. kenya yeah because you know it's easy for us to say oh i feel by alone but god is not we are not alone god is putting us together yeah. because we may not be very many but we are there we are present mm. now mm. one of the things that you're known for is shooting straight Mm. Yeah, and, and being a stage shooter myself, I know that it doesn't always work well. Out well with people. So how have you managed to stay true to yourself? Because there is pressure, I think, for all of us to want to conform. I laughed when you said about singing. I do sing, but I always felt that my personality was not molded for a pastor's wife because, mm. you know, you're not wearing palms and playing the piano mm. and hello, praise Jesus, and speaking mm. so sweetly mm. and, you know, being very calm or being very... Maybe not accommodating. I don't know. I mm. just tend to, what comes to my head comes out through my mouth. Mm. And so I, that was my biggest fear of being a pastor's wife. Mm. Mm. How have you grown in the grace to accept yourself and see your place in the body? And you know, uh, you, you're asking in terms of the body, but even from the family front, like <laughs> my siblings uh, or even my in-laws, but more my siblings, uh, there, there are certain things that I see 
maybe because of the exposure that I have, exposure of I, 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 I hear this family is going through this, I hear that family went through that. I have this, I, I almost can't tell what's happening in families at any mm. one time. Mm. Because I have that, I look at our, 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 my mother's family, my father's family, and I say, we can do better, we can improve. Mm. So I, 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 I just come out up front with all gentleness and courtesy that I can uh, uh, harness and say, please, let, like now our years are moving on, a lot of us, uh, my siblings and so on, are, 60 plus, mm. 60 plus. So these are years, they, they are waning years. We like it, we don't like mm. it. They are waning years. So we put our houses in, in order. order. Don't, don't, don't be there like uh, a brother of mine would say, uh, oh, but if Ada is there, even if I'm not there, she will sort out my family. But you see, Carol, if my brother is not there, he's, he has died and his children are there, I really cannot go there to command them. Mm. If my brother is there, I can command them because he will say, hey, my sister said this and I will be covered. So you see, that goes to say that uh, uh, we must organize ourselves, mm. not hoping someone else will. We'll do you know, it. there are people who sit, they have not written <clears throat> the will. They have not. And then when they die, there is confusion. There's pulling, there's wrong. You can just stop all that by writing a will. Mm. Or by saying, the, I have six children, I don't have five that you know, there is another one over there. Mm. And come <laughs> out straight so that at the end of, on a funeral day, we don't see some young man saying, I'm also be, I belong here. And it's news to everybody. <laughs> so let's lay everything clear. Yeah. So, so for me, I just come out and say, please, even, even, even if it's like I'm coming out rough, I'm just trying to be help helpful. ourselves. Yeah. So that we are not, we can avoid some of these newspaper stories that, oh, now this, uh, oh, I didn't know Bishop Adoyo, or oh, I didn't know he had stolen this. We can't stop that, you know. Mm. So I have learned to say, so long as it's truth yeah. and there isn't malice mm. and I'm not coming with a harshness. And it's know? not lies. And it's not lies. I, I think it should be said because I find I find Kenyans, let me use that, I find Kenyans, they want to go round it and pass and go. Mm. They don't want to address mm. the elephant in, in the, the house. Mm. And so I, I say, no, let's deal with this matter. It will help someone, it will help that future, it will help, help when you are not there. So I, 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 I don't, I, I guard myself not to be harsh, not to be, angry with it mm. because the bible says the anger of man does not work out the righteousness, the righteousness of god, of god. so to, if we are to do it for the righteousness of god then we must be as calm as possible i personally have clashed with a brother of mine in a very bad way you know he called me names just in this uh, season in these days you know but i talked to myself i said Ada, you will not lose your temper you just mm. remain calm, let him rattle, let him do what. And because it wasn't a, a confrontation one to one, it was in a sitting, mm. you know, and the people, the rest of the people could see, oh, that's uncalled for, you know. So later on he was talked to and he calmed down. About, but how bad would it have been if I also began to throw, throw the harsh words to one another? So one has to be very controlled. There's this verse in uh, Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23. It says, God your, your heart, heart with all diligence. due diligence a lot of diligence don't just guard it Peter. no with all diligence to see that nothing escaped nothing pollutes your heart nothing uh, contaminates your heart by you talking out of oh she annoyed me so i just say mad no 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 what do you want to be remembered for mm, remembered for Mm. What's the legacy you want to leave that behind? I want to leave, leave behind. I want to, a woman who united, a, a unifying agent in a season that we were in, a season of tribal clashes, political clashes, uh, you know, all this, a woman whose desire and passion was to see unity. Amen. And you know, I go to, what can I say? I go to Nyeri, for example, mm. and I don't sleep in a hotel. I have daughters there. I go to Loitok Tok, and I have 
you know, breakfast in a home. I go to all these places. I go to Siaya. I go to, I come from Western Kenya and my home is in Kitale. But I will go to El Geo Market and I will find a place. I'll not Amen. sleep in a hotel. I just find that unifying. And one more time, we go to Dalimoro Girls idea. It was like the setting was already there from the word go in those formative years that mine is to see the unity, the preciousness that is in, in Karo. Mm. I don't see where you come from. I see the preciousness, the Jesus, the person that, is, that has saved you and that has saved me is the same. And that connection, it blesses my heart. It blesses my heart. Yeah, so I, I would like to be remembered for as a unifying agent of, in the nation of Kenya. Amen. Yes, amen. amen. You have told me that the verse that you go by is John 4, 6, is it? I am the way, the truth, and 14, the life. 6. John 14, 6. That's yeah. your guiding verse. Yes. But what's the song that continually plays in your spirit and encourages you? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, uh, on Christ, the solid rock, rock I stand. I, stand. Oh, I sing that song again and again, especially in Swahili. Uh, I own Christ, the solid rock I stand. Give yes. us your parting shot. Okay, my, uh, my parting shot. I didn't know it was already finished. I was yeah. done <laughs> yeah. My parting shot is, I find it such an honor and such a privilege to be interviewed by Pastor Carol. I, like I, like I alluded to, uh, I, I, I have to pinch myself to see that is it me that is talking. I am forever eternally grateful for the gift of salvation in mm. Christ Jesus because it is that salvation that gives me the right to stand in Loitoktok, to stand in Embu, to stand in Eldoret and speak about what God has done in my life. And if by you looking at me, and you, there is something to admire and you adopt it in your life. That for me is the greatest joy that I can ever have for myself. And may God truly, truly energize you. There is nothing, there's no useless thing in your life. There is everything that is useful in your life and it will come out in the fullness of time. Just pursue God, focused on him. The way I said in Hebrews 12, um, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Thank you very much. Amen. Amen. And I don't think I would say that any better. God has greatness in each one of us. And that thing, I like what you said, that that thing that you dismiss may be the very thing that the Lord wants to use. So go and shine. Let your life make a difference. And I can tell you, my sister, your life has definitely made a difference. Thank you. Thank you Thank so, much. so much. God bless you. And let's see each other next week. Bye. Thank you.